There you go, Doug. We got him. You see him right there? They're ahead of him. Coming up, coming up to I-10 here. No, we're going to be going southbound. Good afternoon, everybody. Melanie Lawson and Art Rascone here in the Eyewitness Newsroom. We are following a car chase right now. We believe it is that Dodge Charger you are looking at there. Let's go straight up right now to Don Armstrong, who is above the scene in Sky Eye. And Don, how long have we been chasing this car? We've been uh, following this for about the past 10 minutes, actually trying to catch up with us. From what we understand, this is a Dodge Challenger, uh, and it is a Hellcat, 707 horsepower motor in this car, and obviously going way faster than the speed limit here. Uh, this is just Ooh. outside the Beltway on I-10. We're heading eastbound now, and uh, probably about 100 miles an hour or so, if not faster. Yeah, Don, uh, that, police that are car in is pursuit. moving so fast. I'm not getting mixed Midas on my IFB right away. I'm getting feedback, uh, so I'm turning it down. But Don, that that vehicle is clearly going at least 110 miles an hour. That guy is moving along, yeah. and those chargers, if you've ever been in one of those and driven those things, they can cruise at 150 without a problem. And that's what's dangerous. Well, that it is, Art. And uh, wow. uh, again, a lot of police uh, here uh, in, in pursuit. Uh, they were ahead of him a little while ago. We, we were going back westbound on I-10, and then he went uh, over the beltway and then back to the eastbound side here on I-10. So we're headed back out toward uh, the San Jacinto River currently. Yeah, wow, look at that. And hey, look at him weaving in and out of those vehicles, yeah, that's uh, what's Don. Scary. And it is so scary because he is coming so very close to all of those vehicles. And they've been following him for some time now because we know that the, the officers were all around him and sort of spotted him and without lights, just sort of slowly following him, almost tagging him. Um, but now we have a chase clearly underway, and this guy is cruising well above the speed limit. All right, what we're getting is that what we've heard anyway from uh, different sources is that this car had a tracker on it. Uh -huh. We believe it may be stolen, and, uh, and the police are in pursuit of this. And they lost him for a while because he got so far out in front of them, but the tracker helped them pinpoint exactly where he was, and so they narrowed their focus down in this chase, uh, clearly using the feeder now, the side uh, over there on the emergency shoulder, trying to get around all of these cars. We're out here at the San Jacinto River, heading eastbound on I-10 at a high rate of speed. Uh, usually these things don't end well. We also got reports, uh, and this is just uh, right now, as far as unconfirmed, that the, this particular person has a long gun, a rifle, in the car with him. Now, oh we don't know whether it was just a stolen car or there was something else that happened prior to him stealing the car. We just don't have all of the details yet. But again, heading at a high rate of speed out here on I-10, the Baytown East Freeway, uh, the San Jacinto River. Hey, Don, we'd heard at one point that Houston police were chasing him. Is that still the case? This is obviously pretty far outside of their jurisdiction now. Well, for fear that I will lose him, uh, I can tell you that there were probably a dozen uh, HPD cars in pursuit. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, they wow. got ahead of him because he had made a U-turn, so they were already there. Uh, he passed them, uh, and uh, I do know that there are sheriff's deputies involved in this as well as the HPD. Chopper, uh, at least one of them in pursuit with us up here uh, with this chase heading eastbound on I-10. How fast are you going, Don? Uh, our current speed is about 100, uh, 110, so we're kind of keeping up with him. Uh, and uh, his problem is is that there's been traffic, so he's had right. to kind of slow down to maneuver through the traffic. Yeah, and on some of those open stretches, you can clearly see that he picks up speed. He probably jumps from 100 to 130 or so, you know, but this guy is moving along so, so very fast. But, wow, just incredible speeds. We just hope he just got, doesn't get involved in an accident here on the freeway because we know how that would result, uh, especially when you're traveling at this rate of speed. But, by, man, at this rate of speed, he's going to be in Beaumont in 30 minutes, Don. <laughs>
Well, that's right. Uh, this car will do well over 100 miles an hour with 707 horsepower and a six-speed transmission in it. Uh, this car will fly. I have had the opportunity to drive one of these cars, and uh, it is almost scary at so fast. Now, and he's weaving in and out among other cars, which is probably the most frightening part. This is usually when we see some terrible accident happen, as Art mentioned. But tell us where you are now. Uh, let me get a uh, marker for you here. Um, Mike, can you tell us where we are? Mike's uh, coming up on Garth Road. Garth Road. Right. So way past Bucky's. So we're way Bucky's. out here. Yeah, way past Bucky's. Way right. past yes. Bucky's. Okay. That's, That's a marker. Right. Bucky's That's is a marker landmark. for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. And so here's the story for those of you just joining us. This Dodge Charger here, uh, the white one you're looking at, uh, traveling at speeds well over 100 miles an hour. I mean, our pilot uh, is traveling at over 100 miles an hour and it's tough to keep up with him. But we believe, now this is not confirmed, but we believe it may have a tracker device in it and it may be a stolen vehicle. But police have been following him for some time, but the chase just began only moments ago, and we've been right on top of it with Sky Eye Pictures uh, as he has been traveling at 100 to 120 miles an hour off times and weaving in and out of traffic. And, um, oh, wow, just so yeah, very close yeah, to so many close of those to, vehicles. Yeah, and, and you're wondering, he doesn't want to uh, collide with one of those 18-wheelers. That's oh not going to end well for him. No. But what we do know is uh, we believe this is a stolen vehicle, a white Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Uh, and as Art has pointed out, it's got a lot of hor horsepower there. You can really move at pretty good speeds. We're also hearing that Precinct 3 may also be involved. So not just uh, Houston police who started tracking this guy at 1600 Post Oak. That was uh, almost an hour ago now. Um, but as you can see, he is well out oh, the East boy, Freeway at this guy. point, uh, well past Bucky's. So yeah. all of us know where that is. <laughs> uh, any state troopers? Do you see any state troopers around, Don? Because clearly they're going to have to take control or at least get on this as well, because he is way outside of even county boundaries, isn't he? Yes, and I have not seen any state troopers yet. Look at him. Look at him. Go. Look at him pursuit. weaving. Wow. Uh, we did, well, he did, pass a uh, unmarked uh, police vehicle that had its lights on just a moment ago. Okay. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what they plan on doing and how to bring this uh, to an end. Sooner or later, he's going to have to get off the freeway, I assume. Right. And, uh, get into a side street. Can't c continue to do this forever. And traffic uh, is only going to get worse, Don, right? Because they, this eventually well, goes from three to two lanes. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've been this far east, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I can't confirm that. But uh, I do know that uh, that Beaumont is a, is a ways away. And uh, but I would imagine that at some point or another, they may even consider shutting down the freeway miles ahead to bring this to a conclusion. We'll see. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned that there is a police helicopter following him. Have you been able to see any of the officers in his wake? Uh, I know for a little while they lost him because he was so far out in front. Wow, he just sideswiped. It looked like that 18-wheeler. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know, Melanie. Uh, I've been so focused on trying to uh, find him to begin sure, with. And right. I wanted to point out that the word that we had was is that uh, this was a stolen vehicle and they were following him without, without any emergency lights on to pull him over. So they followed him for a distance. And then when they felt that they had a plan in place, they turned on the lights and that's when the chase started. Yeah. And so they had been following him for some time without lights and without a high-speed chase. Well, and this guy clearly knows, we just lost our mixed minus, there we go. We, this guy clearly knows as well that he has some power under that engine. He knows how to operate the vehicle. This is a V8 under that thing. Those chargers can clearly move at 130 consistently, and it is, it is a muscle car, and that's what it's known for. And so uh, when you're moving along at this rate of speed, I mean, that's okay for this vehicle. It's not like it's going to overheat and, you know, explode and have problems. But I'm just wondering about the police officers. They don't seem to be anywhere near this guy, in, at least in, uh, immediately, Don. Well, I, you know, I, I would love to pull out even further to, to show you a wider shot to check on that. But right, but we don't want to do guy. that for fear that right. I may, might lose him. Right.
Uh, our pilot, wow. Mike Silman, tells me that there is a vehicle, a police vehicle, about a quarter mile back. And I don't know whether you saw it flash by the screen there, but there were three more vehicles, uh, emergency police vehicles, that he just passed. He so is he's moving along at a very good clip. Oh, yeah, my he gosh. He really is. Yeah, I don't, look, I don't know nearly as much as Art does about muscle cars, but we can definitely <laughs> see that this guy is really hauling it at this point. Don, oh, we man. asked you a moment ago, you said you thought you were going about 110, and you're having trouble on... Well, we are, uh, and, uh, and uh, HPD is uh, as well, but thank goodness we've got uh, the doubler on our camera here so we can take a picture of him from quite a distance. Right. Yeah, we remind the audience that this is not... I mean, he's not right on top of him. Our, our, you know, the pilot, he has this incredible zooming lens that can go all the way into uh, that vehicle that it makes it appear that we're right on top but uh, we're having a tough time keeping up with this guy uh, you know what these things do not end well and I don't understand the mentality of these people who are continually on the road like this driving fast and weaving in and out of traffic and and and, and clearly not understanding what potentially could happen and that inevitably they're going to be stopped, they're going to be ca captured. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's right, and, the and, history and of to, it. And to continue our conversation about our speed, I just checked with uh, Mike Silman, who's uh, at the controls of our uh, Sky Eye helicopter here. We're currently doing 120 miles an hour, wow. oh, and we are, he, is losing, he is losing us. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're at the maximum speed right now, but we're going to try to keep with him as long as we can. Wow. wow. And, so and what body of water are you guys crossing over right now? Where are you? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. This is the Trinity River. Okay. Trinity River, okay. All right, as we continue yeah, to watch Trinity. this guy, and, and this guy. Yeah, yeah, he is really oh. moving it there. And obviously, it looks as though he may be passing a lot of these folks on the left. Does that mean he's in that emergency lane, or is... Yeah, he's on yeah. that shoulder. No, this yeah. is uh, this this part of the freeway here is three lanes. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, I'm he's going to run we, into two uh, lanes. We he's made a mistake, and this is this is Lost River that we just went over. Okay, okay. Lost we, River. You know, we, because because I'm shooting so far out ahead of us here. Uh, it, it's taken a while for Mike to be able to tell me where exactly we are. Right. Uh, so, because, you know, we're shooting so far ahead of us. Wow. wow. And we're I firing mean, a million questions at you. we got to apologize for that as well, Don, <laughs> because we realize you've got uh, much bigger fish to fry at this point trying to keep up with this guy. But well, there you just a... saw the Wallaceville exit sign right. uh, three quarters of a mile ahead. All right. So, Wallaceville, he's going to be approaching Winnie. Way, and I can... Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I uh, am zoomed in all the way. I can't zoom in any further than that. Oh, my goodness. I thought goodness. he was going to take the Wallaceville exit, but it's not. Yeah, okay, so to remind the audience, rider, yeah. here's the problem here. We're, we're, we've been trying to keep, we've been trying as the chopper, I'm talking about we as the ABC 13, trying to keep up with this guy. The chopper's traveling at 120 miles an hour. We have extended zoom lens into this guy, and yet he's beating us. Mm -hmm. You know what? And that can't happen because, you know, <laughs> as much as we don't want it to happen because HPD is having a tough time uh, keeping up with this guy as well. So he's cruising sometimes well over 130, 140 miles an hour on some of those open stretches, clearly slowing down when there's traffic close by. But he's he's passing some of these vehicles like they're standing still. Yeah, that's absolutely I mean, that's true. how fast this guy is moving. Well, and the interesting thing is the traffic continues to kind of build up there. We're seeing more vehicles than we did even just a few moments ago, and yet he seems to just thread the needle to just weave right. in and out of traffic here. That's 563 Anahuac Liberty exit. Okay. I'm losing here behind the trees. Yeah. But. All right, so that's the Anahuac uh, Liberty exit. That would, uh, if he took that exit, of course, he'd be going north to Liberty. But if he stays on this, eventually it's going to go from three to two lanes. He's going to he's going to eventually come to Winnie. And if he's being followed still by by deputies, he's way out of uh, of Harris County line. He's already in. Um, what's the next county, uh, Colin? If you could check out the next county, I know you weather guys are always into into understanding where the count is. He's approaching. Yeah, Winnie he's right going to be now. approaching Winnie, and that's going to eventually take those three lanes into two. You have two lanes, so. Well, and the scary Here's part the is he keeps to, passing these the motorcycle the riders. Right What's that, Don? One of the other things I might add is that we are trying to assist uh, the police yeah. because we've got a camera on him and he has lost them. So we're trying to assist the police up here as to his exact whereabouts. Uh, but obviously he still continues to pull ahead. We're going to try to keep up with him as long as we can.
Yeah, Don, we're, we're going to let you all kind of put the pedal to the metal there and continue to keep him in sight. Um, but we can see... We can see a lot of 18-wheelers. Obviously, there's a lot of commercial traffic on I-10 East uh, as it passes through our area. Right. But he is, we think he is already approaching Winnie. He's very close to there yeah, right now. Yeah, he's close to Winnie. He's not approached it yet because you still have three lanes of traffic. Well, I mean, and he's hitting a lot two. of traffic he's right now. hitting a lot of traffic, but eventually those three lanes will be reduced to two. That's close to Winnie. You're into Chambers County now. You're way outside of Harris County line, but yet he continues to move. You can't put spike strips. That's just not feasible, not doable at this point because there's so many other vehicles on the road. It looks like you we see may some, see some police officials there. I'm not yeah, sure. Police some flashing on the side. lights, yeah. But you know what? That might be something else as yeah. well because that guy just, you know, is cruising by all of this and, and well, th for him, this just may be a, a, a Thursday drive, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, this is just crazy what he is doing. Well, we believe he's in a stolen vehicle, which uh, obviously um, is giving him incentive oh, to move even that. faster. But at some point, you know, he's going to run out of, either out of road or out of gas, or worse still, he might get involved in a, in a traffic accident there. And we continue to see him just weaving in and out, obviously trying to elude uh, as many people as possible. Can you still see the police helicopter, Don, or are they gone as well? Well, uh, Melanie, I, I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't turn around to look. Uh, I assume that HPD uh, Fox Helicopter is up with us. Uh, Mike just uh, confirmed that they are here with us, and they also are trying to keep up. Well, we will leave you be to go ahead and Man. try to keep him in your sights there. But uh, Well, I think this is one of the first times where uh, the, the, the vehicle has actually outrun the chopper. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how other way to put it, but I, I think that's what's happening here because it's it's tough to see him. And, and uh, you could see him right there on the far left. He's right there on the shoulder right now passing that box truck and going into the middle lane if you're looking at the middle of the screen that's where he is and you'll see him pull over here whoa people are pulling over yeah, now sure but uh, he's still on the left side and I, he, he's running into a lot of traffic over here let's see what he does he's way over onto the right onto the right shoulder continuing to cruise still backs that uh, 18 wheeler and getting now back on the far left lane it's almost like he's now trying he's, to blend in with the traffic, so it, I wouldn't say he's well, slowed he's going, down much, but he's certainly trying yeah, he's to kind of hide him on all those vehicles. Out of it. Uh, you can see him, he's far on the left now. Yeah. There he goes, all the way to the right shoulder now. He's squeezing by all of that traffic, and he's, oh, it looks like yeah. he's going to be, ex no, he's not exiting. But you see how the traffic is slowed yeah. down there in front, but now he is way out in lead, way out there in the front, now on the left-hand side. And you even wonder if perhaps some of these drivers are being told either to pull over or... Uh, you know what? Look at that. Yeah, Let's see. Yeah. No, there he's squeezed there, by, by the, the traffic on the there. Left. Because I think those 18-wheelers, those, those I believe, were actually... Well, they're per, driving pretty slow, almost yeah. as if they're trying to box yeah, him in. Exactly. You know? Which makes you wonder if perhaps uh, somebody's out there with a We're megaphone to or some kind of information. Something. You, you yeah. see officers ahead. You see some of the flashing lights. So I think the officers are trying to slow mm -hmm. down traffic mm -hmm. to get him to force him off the road. That's what the officers are doing there in front of him. Look on the uh, far left. Word, uh, through Mike, who's in touch with uh, HPD, the helicopter up here, Jefferson County is going to shut down the freeway. So that's ahead. what now, we're looking at. Okay. That, yeah, with with that in mind, please keep in mind that we're still trying to play catch up. Right. So when this happens, it's going to be a while before we get to it, because what you're, the picture that you're looking at right now is probably eight to ten miles ahead of us. Wow! So Man. it's it's quite a ways. For, it's going to be a yeah. while for us to get there once they bring this to an end. I can see but, him uh, still. It, 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 the, the drama continues here. We're going to see what happens when they shut it down. I do see yeah. a police vehicle up ahead. Yeah, okay, yeah. You, you can see, see now. We see more screen. flashing lights. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we also see some uh, police cars actually coming from the opposite direction, it looks like. So they okay, may there very is well... Going yeah. All the way to the right-hand side, you see him trying to weave yeah. in and out of traffic. Police officers are trying to slow down traffic at this point mm -hmm. and warning people, I think, of, of what has taken place. You see him just squeeze by on the right-hand side. He's way over there on the right-hand side. Now this... Whoa, now he's... Now he's getting back in the middle of the lane. You see him, see the flashing lights? Yeah, he's we do right see there the to flashing the left. Lights, yeah. Right there to the left, squeezing in between. 
and it's almost as though all those 18 wheelers are trying to, uh, to yeah. form Look kind of a barricade right ahead wheelers. of him. Now he's driving off to the shoulder. Yeah. He's trying to, those 18 wheelers are trying to help. <laughs> yeah, I think they Look are. I them. think they're trying to box him in. Yeah. Well, there he went. He went past him. Now he's back into the middle of the lane and all the way off there in the front taking the lead again. Um, now, we, it was a we, good attempt. We just got word that uh, the HPD helicopter has had to pull off because they were running low on fuel, yeah. so we're okay. up here by ourselves right now. Oh, wow. Okay, HPD. Now, uh, okay, we're going to be helping out HPD. That's what we're doing. ABC 13 helping HPD because HPD chopper running out of fuel. But now you see him way out there in the front. Uh, it, you can't, oh man. You almost are losing him, it. but uh, we can see him there on the far left hand side as he continues to kind of move along Go ahead and point the traffic to him. there. So we can s continue to make out to him. Yeah, okay, bringing that screen a little bit closer now. All right, so if you're watching this, watch in the middle of the screen, and you see someone right there on the right, far right lane, almost ready to exit, passing that box truck. There he is on the shoulder. And he continues to move. Now, keep in mind, this guy is traveling well over 120 miles an hour at some point because our chopper is traveling at a, at a top speed of 120, and we can't keep up. And as Don says, he's probably 8 to 10 miles out as they try to hold that powerful camera. He's exiting. So this is like the Winnie exit. Off. Yeah. This is the Winnie exit. Now he's headed straight to Winnie. And by the way, there is no traffic there. So you wonder no. if police officers have already uh, blocked off that road. Mm, but right boy. now, he is the only person on the road Okay. as he exits there. All right. Now, so what you're looking at now, this is the exit from I-10. I-10 would continue to uh, Beaumont, and the Winnie exit continues continues, of course, to Winnie. But there he is in the middle of the road, taking off on that road. If you stay on that road as well, that'll take you all the way to Port Arthur. Say that. That's, that's 76. Uh -huh. That's uh, Freeway 76, okay. I believe. So that'll take you all the way to Port Arthur. Uh, if we lose, and perhaps that might happen because here we are in Chambers County, we're going to be getting into Port, Port Arthur here soon. Highway 73, not 76, so it says 76, but it's 73, actually. This is off to Winnie, and then eventually it goes. If you stay on this freeway, it'll take you all the way to Port Arthur, straight to Port Arthur. And we're doing our very best. Uh, Don Armstrong is, and his pilot, Mike, they're doing their very best to keep him in sight. Go ahead, Don. What were you saying? I was just saying that we are 19 miles west of Beaumont. That's how far east wow. of Houston we are. man. You know, that's the fastest trip ever. To yeah, I was going to say, he's made, made it, it in record speed, that is for sure. This guy's made it there in 35 minutes. We're seeing um, him pull ahead there of that 18-wheeler. Uh, now, there's not much traffic on Highway 73. So this guy can, I mean, I've, uh, I'll admit it, I've traveled 75, 80 miles an hour on 73, <laughs> and there wasn't a car in sight. And so you get this guy with his muscle car, his charger, and traveling at 120, 130, and he's just going to... He's going he's gonna to leave everyone in the dust. But yes. sadly, I mean, we don't want this guy to get away. This guy has caused a lot of danger. Um, and who knows uh, what else he could be causing. Well, what we do know at this point is that the, the, the law enforcement in Chambers County is aware of him. And they're also trying to kind of shut things down there. But we do not know, though, whether no. or not there are still HPD officers behind him. Uh, I'm sure Don Armstrong and his pilot can give us a little bit better idea. But as Art says, he is now just right outside of Beaumont, which is record time because he left 1600 uh, post Oak about 1140, so a little bit uh, uh, more than an hour ago and we have been following him almost since that time okay now on highway 73 headed to port arthur um already driving past winnie and he is I've, you know what i honestly i've lost track of him he's somewhere over there on the right hand side i believe he's on the left he's getting into the shaded portion area there but um, we have been tracking this guy. It's a Dodge Charger, Charger uh, one of those muscle cars. Challenger. Challenger, Challenger, excuse me. Yeah. Um, uh, and just moving along at speeds that have been incredibly fast at 130, possibly 140 at times on open stretches, but uh, weaving in and out of traffic. We believe that it may be a stolen car. That has not yet been confirmed. Perhaps police officers had a tracker on this device as well, on this vehicle. We see him over there on the right-hand side. He's going on the right shoulder, passing what looked like an attempted roadblock there from the 18-wheeler. You see him now. He's in the front of that 18-wheeler, and he's 
just sort of on his own out there. And let's hope they're able to put up some other type of roadblock. What you need are some cooperative 18-wheeler guys who say, you know what, we'll block it for you. Yeah. And then just, just and we take saw up the entire lane. We saw several of them attempting to do that. What we're being told is that uh, he may be traveling in a stolen car. That's at least part of the reason that they are following him. But also that he may also have a long gun in the car. That is what they're very concerned about. And uh, they certainly don't want to take any chances on anyone else getting caught in the middle of this. Uh, as we look at these pictures, as Art says, he is so far out in front, it's almost uh, hard to keep up with him. And especially as he moves into this very heavily wooded area there, he's disappearing behind the trees. But we do know he is on Highway mm. 73. He is just outside of Beaumont at this point, And he continues to just elude authorities. We lost uh, HPD's Fox helicopter a short while ago, according to Don, simply because they were running low on fuel and uh, they had to go back. So right now we are attempting to be good citizens and stay on top of this for them as well as for our own coverage. All right, here it is. So you're looking is. at a Hellcat there, is that what? That's, that's what it is right here. These things move. They move fast. I mean, they were, they, it, it, this is the newer version, of course. This is probably a 2016, 2017 model or, or perhaps. Perhaps, uh, you know, maybe even to 2015, but but uh, these Challengers, uh, I mean, they're, they're built with V8s that uh, have near, you know, 326 cubic inch engines that are just incredibly fast, and that's what he's been doing, is using the muscle of that vehicle to, uh, well, at least get away from HPD. Yeah, exactly. I mean, HPD ran out, out of gas. Uh, their chopper, they had to turn around. Um, and you've got to hope that he's going to run out of gas at yeah, some point. Right. He is certainly burning it at uh, top speed there. I mean, these vehicles get about 15, 16 miles per gallon mm -hmm. if you're traveling at 65 yeah. miles an hour. At a normal you speed. You know, at a normal speed. This guy's probably getting six miles to the gallon <laughs> traveling from Houston to Beaumont, which is 100 miles, you know, and he went through. And they hold 18 gallons. And they hold 18 gallons. Colin is telling us. So, you know, as he's going to go through gas very, very fast, eventually he's going to run out. And let's hope that uh, Chambers County, as well as uh, others in, in Port Arthur, are well aware of where he is and perhaps can stop him at some point. All right. We see some more flashing cars there. All right. All right. We do see some flashing cars. We're hoping that those are, uh, you know, law enforcement officials either with Chambers County. We know Precinct 3 is also out there. Yeah. But just to kind of catch you up on this, about 1140, uh, police officers, HPD, started chasing this car. As we've been telling you, it is, at, at least it appears from uh, what we can see, a white Dodge Challenger Hellcat. And he has been moving at speeds well in excess of 100 miles an hour. At one point, our chopper was going about 100 and 20 and they were having difficulty yeah. keeping up with him but he left uh, the area of uh, 1600 post oak and uh, what we've been hearing is that law enforcement are very concerned not only that he's in a stolen vehicle but also that he may indeed have a uh, long barrel gun inside that car and they are concerned about anyone else getting caught in the fray but as you can see there at some great distance and I believe Don told us he's about eight to ten miles away from them and they're just trying hard to keep up with him you can see him just really moving there along that uh, what appears to be now a, a rural road yeah highway 73 it is um, it's west of Beaumont as well it's south of Beaumont and you takes highway 73 eventually he's going to end up in Port Arthur he may already be there for the speed he's traveling with at but we've kind of lost him at this point because well, he's simply going too fast. Yeah, he really is. HPD helicopter has lost the guy. But the good news here is that uh, they believe, at least oh we've been told this reportedly, there is a tracker on this car, mm -hmm. and eventually he will be found. Oh, Don, Don all right. Is, okay, Don, what did you hear? I, I get out of the car and run, and he, if you can look real closely right to the right behind that uh, transmission tower. Yeah. He's running in an open field out there. Okay, we see. But there are no police around. Oh my okay, goodness. No police around. He's running in an open field and we understand that he's bailed from the vehicle. Yes, the vehicle is over there on the side of the road. I don't know whether you can see it or not. We do see it stopped. Of that tower. Now we don't yes, see him, Don. Is, is he in a white shirt no. or? No. I, I couldn't tell what color shirt he had on, right. but it was a lighter colored shirt. But now Don, the police are rolling up on the scene. Yeah, we see okay. them now coming up behind him, lights flashing. Okay, Don, um, 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the, the 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 logic of stopping in this area and running out in this open field. I mean, there's nothing out there. But you got to wonder if he, he was running out, out of gas. gas. Yeah. yeah, you're he right. I mean, he gas. might be running out of gas. You're absolutely yeah. right. I didn't think of that, but here we just talked about it. Yeah, <laughs> that was me saying that. <laughs> we were, he was probably getting five miles to the gallon. We talked about yeah, that as well. Exactly. But. but you can see now that the officers are also out of their cars and they are running as well. Uh, at least that's what it appears to be. You can see several people there running. We have no idea where he is relative to them, but clearly uh, at least his time on the roads has come to an end. Well, he knew that it would. I guess his, uh, his hope was just to outrun police, and uh, he never did because there's, there are always more police that yeah. could, uh, up ahead. You know, no matter what freeway you take, for those ever considering to run away from police, you know what, you're going to be caught, okay? It just, it's just... Uh, that's that's the, the the probability of you being caught is, is is so so high. But now he's run into the field because he ran out of gas apparently yeah. because he's not moving there the vehicle. Uh, there's really nowhere to run at this point. You know they're going to get the canines out there. They're going to hunt for this guy, and he's eventually going to be captured because the police are going to be out there all day. Well, and what, what they were able to do was enlist the services of other officers in that nearby area. We know for sure that Chambers County was also Chambers called County in, right. and we have no idea how many local police departments may have also uh, taken up the call as well. We can see some of the officers out there walking in that field looking for him. Now, we're being able to approach the, this entire area, of course, we're much closer now. But, but Don, when you, um, did you hear through radio that he had stopped the car and bailed from it and, and was on, uh, took a run no, for it? I saw, I, I, I saw him bail out of you the car. You were able to see him do that. Okay. Yes. Wow. Now, there are cows in this field. Yeah, I thought we saw cattle. Yeah. <laughs> So he may be running into more than just human, <laughs> yeah. human pursuit there. If uh, if some of the cattle decide to take out uh, after him, not cows. But. Here, okay, so Don, did HPD chop? N no, sir. Uh, okay, uh, all right. So you're fact, all alone. Mike, can you hear me? Uh, do, uh, do we have any other uh, helicopters up here with us? No, yep. we're the only helicopter up here, so okay. we may be instrumental in trying to catch this guy. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? This is why ABC 13 is number one, because we're here exclusively. You know, we don't want to boast about this, but you know what? We are the only chopper there. Yeah. And we're grabbing this material for you and bringing it live as it happens. Eventually, this guy is going to be found. And HPD, I can guarantee you, they are monitoring our feed, looking at these live pictures, because we're searching for the guy as well, and then uh, hopefully we'll be instrumental in helping catch this guy. Well, you can certainly see several officers there uh, now walking the fields. Uh, I saw an officer in a uniform and a hat just a moment ago. As we continue to scour from the sky there, try to see what they're able to see. Don, did you Over say something about spotting somebody at 3 o'clock? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I was trying to, trying to help Mike. You know, Mike is at a disadvantage because he's just using his uh, bare eyes. And yeah. We're up right. here with a big, powerful camera, so I'm trying to guide him in here. And I, you can see several officers kind of roaming around through the field, but... In that thick brush, it's yeah. going to be—it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging, Don. And that is the problem right now. Yes, Pretty rough is. terrain. Okay, are you spotting something there? No. Okay. The, uh, you know, there's debris of all sorts of stuff out here. It's going to take a little while. We'll mm -hmm. find him. Yeah, you know, we're not going to let him get away from us if we can help that. There's also a ditch here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that has water in it, so there's no telling where he could be in here, but. He's clearly in here somewhere. We'll find him. Yeah. Well, and um, he's at a real disadvantage because we can now see officers approaching from several different uh, vantage points. We also see the cattle roaming there. If, if he stays put and hidden, then it's going to be, he's going to be tougher to find, of course. But if he's on the move, then he's going to be fairly easy to notice, especially from a bird's eye view. 
Well, after all that adrenaline pumping as he uh, engages in that police chase, somehow I don't think he's calmed down and is just laying down, yeah. taking it easy right now. So no doubt he is out there somewhere as we continue to look along with our, our chopper to see if we can spot any movement. Usually the cows to will get tip off as to exactly where they are because they tend to move away from, from humans. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And I'm sure if he can hear the sound of your chopper, he is not happy that there's still somebody hovering above him uh, and able to give away his location, Don. Well, we do see several of the cows there. It looks like they're, wait, uh, go back, Don. Did we see something there just to, the, to your right, perhaps? A little bit of movement? Okay, perhaps not. Hmm. For a second we there, just I heard I that the Beaumont police helicopter is on its way here. Mm -hmm. okay. They're about five minutes away. We are. Okay, you know, they're moving pretty quickly. Uh, yes. So we're we obviously have to uh, step aside for them. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to look for this uh, person. Um, I have a feeling that he's probably down here along the ditch somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Some hiding in the crevice somewhere. They're going to use a FLIR camera, which is one that's kind of a heat. Speaking camera, right, and uh, they will be able to nab him pretty quick. Uh, those heat-seeking cameras are incredible uh, for our audience, just to uh, so that for their understanding. If, if you're flying over someone, now correct me if I'm wrong, Don, but if you're flying over something, a field like that, anything that is distributing any type of heat, which body heat is at 98, and especially his with the adrenaline right. running. You know, you're at 98.6, and the cows, of course, would be distributing heat. But they, the, all of those signals are noted very, very clearly through their almost infrared cameras that, that give off that heat sense. That's that exactly right, Art. Okay. And I'm sure that th they'll be monitoring that very closely and have it on as soon as they arrive here. And we're continuing to look See, with I you. Yeah. See, on the other side of this ditch, it's wide open field. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I just can't imagine that he would uh, run out here unless perhaps right. he's hiding underneath something like that. But um, generally speaking, from my experience in this, the ditch would be the, the obvious place to yeah. hide. Right. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense, Don. Yeah. Uh, um, and Mike was just passing along to me that typically they uh, you know, on the on the run from the police, they typically don't go any further than a hundred yards. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. well, and there is a wooded area okay, there. The, the, so. the police helicopter has just arrived. Mm -hmm. Here he is, right here. Okay, so this is Beaumont Police Department. Uh, are county officials out there as well? I, I presume so. Look, they, yeah, that's the sheriff's office. Yeah. That's not Beaumont City, but that's the county's. That's the county's uh, sh uh, chopper. And we can see there on the side Let's of the see, road where he I stopped. I wanted to see who all is here. There, there was the car that we've been yeah. chasing for so long. So and, he actually uh, jumped so out on the passenger side. Yeah, DPS is here. There's about eight cars, so mm -hmm. at least uh, eight officers are in pursuit out here in this field. It's just a matter of time before they catch him. as we continue to kind of look and also watch the cows because as you pointed out they may actually help us spot this guy as well and we say guy we're assuming it's a man but we don't really know at this point all we know is that whoever it was was driving it in, in excess of 120 miles an hour for yeah. much of this process here much of this chase you know what Don something to consider as well it was reported that he possibly had a long gun with him um, uh, for the audience that's uh, generally you know it could be a rifle of some sort or a shotgun not sure what it is uh, it's it's reported that he had one it's not been confirmed but as well you wonder whether he took that with him when he bailed from the vehicle that's also clearly a concern by by law enforcement officers as they continue to search this field well, we have one of our crew 
We've got a reporter and a photographer already headed out to this location. Of course, they're not moving at the same speed he is, so uh, it's going to take them a little bit of time to get there. But in the meantime, we continue to rely on our pilot, Mike, there to keep uh, their eyes peeled. And, and uh, we are proud to also be helping the police department. We do know that HPD had to turn back at some point because they needed fuel. We believe we are seeing, is that the Chambers County Sheriff's Office, do you it's think? It's Chambers County, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Beaumont is, I believe, in Chambers County. Mm -hmm. but let me double check that. But it is the County Sheriff's Office in there. Another helicopter we saw just moments ago. Okay. We continue to watch this, and uh, we really have to take our hats off to our, our folks in the chopper. We're going to stay on top of this, uh, and we're going to continue to update you on our website, abc13.com. Uh, ABC yeah, there you have some county officials. Offices, yeah. um, they're monitoring. That's Chambers County. They continue, of course, of course, to watch this, and uh, they are out there in droves. You can see them there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have county. You have uh, state troopers, and you have city as well. You can see all of the, the different colors of, of, of law enforcement attire there. And you have undercover mm -hmm. there as well. Um, and as we've seen, several people armed, so they are yeah. not wasting any time now. All right, we need to go ahead and uh, we're going to continue this online, abc13.com. You can watch it right there. But we've been covering this for you this long chase and it has resulted in the guy bailing from the vehicle now out there in the field you can watch it online abc13.com and the good news is nobody hurt as far as we know right. we'll be back Yes, 
Yeah, I was talking to you on the two-way. We've got probably 30 to 45 minutes. The Beaumont Airport's about 45 minutes, uh, I'm sorry, about eight minutes away. I got you. Um, Art and Melanie. Okay, they're they're running in. I'm not exactly sure what, but you know, one of the things that I thought was the fact that they may be holding back because uh, they're worried about a, the the long gun that I had mentioned earlier, and that they that they may be waiting on getting a dog out here. But let's see what what they what they do now. Um, I know that there were some other officers out here, and I had lost track of them. They're running this way, but I don't see any of them. Correct. Yes. Yeah, there was an officer with a long gun himself. Um, now, understand that they may be being directed by the uh, law enforcement helicopter that's up here with us. That would be this this helicopter here. Yes, correct. Let's just stay with him for a minute because he, he's got the FLIR camera. Uh, there's also an observer back here in the back. So we're gonna stick with him. I, they're, I, they're looking in this brush. They're focused. Right there. No, that's him, right in the middle of the screen. And I'm glad to report it looks like he does not have a weapon on him.
Well, um, all I can see is is that uh, police, who with the, with the assistance of that FLIR camera, that heat-seeking camera, they found him in a row of bush back here in the back of this field that he ran out into. And uh, I'm glad to say that we at least caught all of that on camera. It was a long way away, and it took us quite a time to get here to be able to uh, actually find this guy. And, and you know, we, we are so glad that this has finally ended. It appears to be peacefully, safely, and uh, there were no accidents along the way and didn't cause any wrecks that we are aware of. Afternoon. I really have no words for what happened before the court proceeding here in Jefferson County. That 25 year old man, he laughed about this chase. He acted as if it was a no was no big deal. Now that candid conversation took place inside that courtroom before the judge came. He was speaking with officers. He was boasting about his speeds and he marveled at how fast that Dodger could accelerate. He showed no remorse, as I mentioned, after about this afternoon. And he said that he was shopping at the Galleria. He had left the Galleria and that's when police attempted to pull him over. I want to go to some video from Sky Eye 13 exclusive footage of when this chase started around 1140 this morning. Now, this man's name is Mohammed Abu Shaliba. He led law enforcement on that chase spanning multiple counties. He raced eastward on I-10 in speeds of excess of 110 miles an hour. Police say he was wanted on a felony warrant out of Harris County. As you can see, that Dodger weaved in and out of traffic. He eventually abandoned that vehicle about 15 miles west of Port Arthur on Highway 73 in court. Abdul Shaliba told officers again before the judge had entered the courtroom that he had just GPS the nearest court, the nearest city that was Port Arthur. He looked down, he saw that he had about 18 miles left of fuel, so he decided to pull over. Then he ran out into a field where cattle were and was even at one point seen talking on the phone before that takedown. Eyewitnesses couldn't believe what they were seeing. Do you know, have any idea, because when we were hovering over him, uh, he was on his cell phone. Was he talking to police? Do you know who he was talking to? I do not know who he was talking to at the time. You know, I knew something had to be going on in front of me. So I, I actually, I could have went I-10, um, but I decided to go 73 because I thought, well, there's a less chance of something being on 73 than the main interstate, you know. And you were on. And then voila, right in front of me, it all stopped. Certainly a different afternoon there on Highway 73. Let's go up to Sky Drone 13, hovering above that field right now, because I wanted to point out among the many things that this 25-year-old said in court, he said that he was wearing a new outfit, including, including Louis Vuitton shoes that he was running in that field with. He lost a shoe after he stepped in manure, he told an officer. Again, he just was taken here from Jefferson County back to Harris County to face a felony charge of evading with a motor vehicle. He's already been given no bond.